Okay, guys. <clears throat> Welcome. Grab a chair. Good to see you again. It's been over three months. We've had the big COVID pause here and rather technical difficulties. Our, our wireless mic that we usually use stopped working. So we have the backup mic and we'll see how that goes. But welcome everybody, welcome back. And uh, this is our ninth launch lesson, Strategies for a Winning Life. And before we get going, we're gonna uh, play one of the videos that was um, part of the, uh, part of the uh, material for the, uh, there it is. Part of the material for the lesson. So let's have a quick, just a three minute video and get our juices flowing. Say they're successful. 
one perspective. Uh, we'll talk. We'll touch on that idea, but that's a common one. Any uh, any others? Titles. Titles. And that kind of might be things like prestige. Uh, does that include fame? In other words, look at me. I think it's part of our human nature, a little bit. Look at me. Certainly as we're kids, that's what, we're, that's what we want, right? And hopefully, maybe we found other things besides look at me. Um, we'll touch on some of those. Any others? Any other thoughts? Respect. I heard respect. Is respect part of success? Sure. Um, how about oh, helping others? This board's pretty wobbly. Helping others, would that be an aspect of success? Sure. Some people dedicate their life to, to that, and we would call them successful. Health. Uh, I heard health. Uh, probably good health, right? Like some, in, in my, my profession, I deal with people with, um, with some level of success in some areas, but they would often say without health, it's not worth very much, right? We have a goal, we become successful, but if we don't have our health to go with it, what else if we have success but we don't have our family to go with it? And you might say family success. What does that look like? Well, that's a whole other question, isn't it? But I think a lot of people might say part of success is a successful family, a balanced family, a loving family, um, whatever words you can say in that regard. And we have a little bit more space. What should go in that space right there? <laughs> Achievements. Achievements. Yeah, there you go. That's a good one. We're going to talk about the uh, achieve. Should there be any on there? I'm going to guess not. We're going to touch on the idea of um, setting and achieving goals, and not just the goal, but the process. The process of getting there, how it grows us, and how it makes us feel as we're going towards a worthwhile goal. So this is kind of a bit of a backdrop. The, um, the subject of this uh, lesson today is strategies for a winning life. Um, the word success kind of blends with that, right? But it's not, it's not just that. But we'll start off with what the video talked about and what we have on the whiteboard here as far as uh, ideas about success. And we'll blend those into the concept of strategies for a winning life. Last piece of technology, see if it works. Hey, it worked. So that's what we just did. That was the three-minute video. I tried doing it from that link, but it just makes a mess. So first of all, welcome for being here. We commend you for being here, for taking time out of your schedule to uh, go through the snowstorm. <laughs> yes, our weather is crazy. And to take some time to study, to learn, to grow, uh, to pursue success, to want to learn and you know improve get better. We commend you for doing that. Your coaches are here for you. Um, that's why we're here. We're all voluntary, all of us. Other coaches will have a name tag like this. So my name's Coach Al, and uh, we're here for you. It's, it's really, truly, it's about you. We were, we were where you are at one, one time in the past, and our vision is to help others get more successfully launched. That's why it's called Launch Class. You know, their career, family, uh, finances, health, relationships, things like that. And so we'll often refer to the seven areas of life on this diagram. This diagram came from a, uh, a men's group that some of us were part of in the past. And it's just a way of looking at life. It's uh, a metaphor for life, if you will. We call it the life choices diagram. And essentially the idea here is if we're trying to have a winning life, 
how do we break it down? What are some of the components of that? So one of the ideas of a winning life is there's seven areas of life, spiritual, family, social, financial, career, physical, mental. And the idea is to have some semblance of confidence and balance and some level of success in all seven areas. Uh, some some uh, you know knowledge and skill in the areas, some balance in those areas. And so the idea is what we're really after ultimately is in our, in our mind, it's a good feeling. But we want a lasting, we want lasting peace, happiness, confidence and fulfillment. That's kind of what we think we're after. So we, we think a new car will get us that. We, it gets us a little bit of that, but not lasting. We think a new girlfriend or boyfriend might get us that. Might help, uh, might not. We think um, a new job, a new house. But here's the challenge. Uh, we have challenges in our life, and here's us. We have choices to make. We can go towards the problem, towards the challenges, towards the goals, or we can say that looks too hard, and we can go left to what we call escape. And that might be fun, food, pleasure, shopping, I said porn, church service, wasting time, all kinds of things we can waste our time on. And you would think if we do that, we may not have a winning life. We may not have much success. And so short-term pleasure is the idea. It does not bring us lasting peace and happiness, confidence and fulfillment that we're really after. Trying to find or pursue success in these seven areas will help us to have that lasting peace. And so move towards the problem. The foundational concept in launch class is that God will meet you there. You move towards the problem, just simply have a little bit of courage and ask God to join you. But even if you don't, simply moving towards the problem, going through the corridor of fear, uncertainty, and doubt, you will move towards the things that we really want. That's the concept of this diagram. I guess the last thing I'll say is life squeezes us down. There's always pressures in life. It could be financial, relational, health, you name it. And God is pushing up, trying to encourage us to go in the good direction. So life squeezes us. Challenges of life, God trying to go in the right direction. We get squeezed and we have a choice to make. So launch class is about helping us to first understand that we have a choice to make and then coaching and encouraging us in the right direction to go after some uh, you know, improved relationships, improved finances, improved for career, improved health, all those areas. So that's the concept of launch class. Now last time we talked, which was actually a little over three months ago, before our you know, COVID uh, lockdown uh, in December, we talked about embracing adversity on your way to success. And so this is, today it's about strategies for a winning life. So we're kind of pulling together a lot of the lessons that we've had up to today um, on, a, on a holistic basis. So how do we know what a winning life might look like? Well, here's a few signs we put on the board over there. How do we know? Well, if we could have, if we can excel and have confidence in all seven areas, that would be one measure, one sign that we have a winning life. Uh, but what other ones? We talked about lasting peace, joy, confidence, fulfillment at the top of that board there. That's kind of what we're after, lasting peace and joy confidence, fulfillment. Now that's, what does the world say? Well, the world says an awful lot, this is why I put it here, lots of fun and pleasure. Um, kind of in our culture, isn't it? To pursue fun and pleasure. Well, look at the diagram we just talked about. If we pursue fun and pleasure, that's turning left instead of right towards our problems, towards our goals, it is not gonna provide lasting peace, joy, confidence, fulfillment, is it? So that one's pretty clear. Now having some fun, having some pleasure, um, all kinds of things, right? In balance are okay, uh, but not by themselves, not as, a, not as a goal, if that makes sense. So in the right balance, that's a, that's a challenging thing to do. How should we balance having fun versus you know, working, versus uh, eating, versus going to the gym, versus helping others? It's a big challenge for sure. Um, we tend to think it's a, something that we can do prayerfully and 
ask God to help us. So that's part of it. So another idea is lots of money, success, prestige. Those are on the whiteboard there. Money, success, and prestige. Well, sometimes they're, those are a byproduct of success, aren't they? So money, success, and prestige in and of themselves aren't necessarily a bad thing. And don't let anybody tell us they're a bad thing. But if we're pursuing money as our primary goal, we're likely going to end up losing things like relationships, respect. Um, we may end up having loss of prestige in the process. So that's just an idea. You're just brainstorming here. Uh, how about a winning life would be fulfilling your purpose? That's kind of what John Maxwell talked about on the, on the video. When you discover your purpose and you align yourself with your purpose, you'll definitely feel a lot better. Now, how do you find your purpose? That's a whole other challenge. We talked about that in some previous lessons. But when we figure out how we're wired, what our strengths, what are God make us for, and try to align ourselves with that, and like John said, that'll be our guiding, our North Star keeps us on track. Well, there's a lot of uh, winning life and success in that concept right there, as the video alluded to. How about this idea? Last one on the page, finishing well. Finishing well, is that what a winning life might look like? Sure. But what does finishing well look like? It could be different for different people, right? So here's a, a book that I highly recommend. It happens to be of that name. Finishing Well by Bob Buford. I read it many years ago. This was his uh, second or third book. His first book that he became famous for. It was called Halftime. That's why it says author of the bestseller Halftime. I won't talk about Halftime. Well, this book touches on it, but this book, it says based on inspiring interviews with 60 remarkable people. 60 different examples of what they did to finish well. Finish well means finishing our life well. We all know people that have had uh, a measure of success in the world's eyes, but then they blew up. Us human beings have a tendency to self-sabotage, don't we? We have some success, then we blow up. And uh, some might say our character was not able to carry us. We've all experienced some of that, even personally. Uh, measure success and then we mess it up somehow, right? But I'm going to read a couple of quick paragraphs in the back of the book. Author Bob Buford calls them, quote, code breakers. That's the 60 people in the book. They are people aged 40 and older who have pioneered the art of finishing well in these modern times. And who can teach us to do the same starting today? Buford sought out 60 of these trailblazers, including a whole bunch of different names, and has recorded their lively conversations in these pages so that they can serve as our, quote, mentors in print for all of us. We'll touch on that idea. Mentors in print, associating with good people, is one of the concepts of success. 20 years from now, Buford writes, the rules for this second adulthood as a productive season of life may be better known. But for now, we're, we're out across the frontier breaking new ground. Buford gives you a chance to sit at the feet of these pioneers and learns from them about finishing well so that you may shift into a far more fulfilling life now, no matter what your age. A life of significance that will be a legacy for future generations too. That's another concept of having a winning life, leaving a legacy. The legacy we want, not the legacy that, you know, that we might be embarrassed from. Lastly, a quote from Rick Warren, my favorite teacher. He said, by definition, sorry, Warren says, my definition of personal success is having those who know me best respect me the most and finishing well. This book shows how to accomplish that, read it and be changed. So he says his definition is having those who know me best respect me the most and finishing well. That's Rick Warren's uh, definition of success. It said, Rick Warren, the author of The Purpose Driven Life. There it is right there. The Purpose Driven Life. <laughs> We're going to talk about the power of association. And you can associate with your heroes. He's definitely one of my heroes. My favorite teacher. Through their books. Okay. And lastly, the idea of finishing well. Uh, an author named Stephen Covey wrote a famous book called The Seven Habits of Highly Successful People. And one of those seven habits was begin with the end in mind. So that's the idea. Finishing well. How do you want to finish? 
Start there. Well, you have a lot of choices to make as you weave, weave your life towards there. Let's try to align ourselves with that. Because most people just kind of coast along, get bounced along. Other people tell them what to do, where to go. And they don't end up where they want to go, generally speaking, right? Okay. How do we know what a winning life looks like? How do we know a winning life when we see it? Well, one of the things we put on the board is achievements. Setting and achieving meaningful goals. That definitely gives us a sense of satisfaction, lasting peace, and happiness. Setting and achieving meaningful goals. The, con the, the main idea there as far as winning life is meaningful. And meaningful to you. That's what matters. You don't need to have someone else tell you what is meaningful to you. Um, so that's what a winning life might look like. Setting and achieving meaningful goals. How about for fulfilling our God-given destiny? We talked about that a little bit. John Maxwell talked about it. Um, discover your purpose and live, live towards that. Live for your purpose. Hopefully it's a purpose that is uh, having an impact, make the world a better place. Having a strong sense of peace when we die. We talked about that. How do we know a winning life? Having a strong, we talked about wanting peace, happiness, fulfillment, confidence. That's kind of as we go. Well, how about at the end? One of the goals I have for sure, having a strong sense of peace when we die. I guess it's before we die. <laughs> so I put it in brackets. Such as we know where we're going. Just put yourself 8, 70, 80, 90. We know where we're going when we die. We have a sense of fulfillment. We're happy with the life we've led. Happy with our legacy. Excited to meet our maker. Things like that. That would be the idea of having a strong sense of peace when we die. Begin with the end in mind. How about these? Uh, these are lessons that we had in launch class. Finding and choosing a great spouse. I think that would be a sign of a winning life or a successful life. Um, now, of course, just having a great spouse is only half a challenge. Having a great marriage is a real good challenge, and we talked about that in launch class as well. But that definitely is a piece of a winning life. Have, finding and choosing a great spouse, having a great marriage, I should have included that too. Finding and choosing a great career, that's aligning with the idea of fulfillment and uh, aligning with your how you're wired, fulfilling your destiny. Uh, having a strong sense of purpose. How about being part of something greater than ourselves? Perhaps being part of God's plan. Uh, the idea of looking around and say, what's God up to? What are some of the good things that are going on around me? How can I join that? Become part of that? Be part of that movement, if you will. Strategies for getting there. Well, one of the big ones is writing down your goals. Remember, the title of this uh, class is Secrets of a Winning Life. And uh, writing down our goals is a big secret. So I challenge you, starting today, or whoever's watching this video, start today. Before you go to bed tonight, perhaps as you're driving home, think about and write down at least three big goals that turn you on. And they won't be necessarily the same goals that turn on somebody else because you're unique. Think about how you're made Three big goals that turn you on, get you excited. Now they'll scare you as well. And we have another class that talked about uh, goal setting, how to do that. So by all means, go watch that class. Well, I'll study the material that went with that class. So goals that turn you on, such as how do you want to be remembered? Such as how healthy do you want to be at age 80? On the whiteboard, we put having great health as a worthwhile goal or as a sign of a winning life, having good health. Uh, good health doesn't happen by accident, we know that. It depends on being proactive, having a plan, eating well, what does that mean? How do you know what food's good or not? How do you know what supplements are good or not? How do you know how much exercise is good? How do you know uh, things like that? So we have to put an effort in, we have to study. Secondly, strategies for getting there. How to find, sorry, find a good coach or mentor coach slash mentor, who can offer encouragement and wisdom. Most successful athletes have a coach. A lot of successful business people and executives have a coach. So the strategy for getting there is find a good coach and mentor. You don't necessarily have to pay them. A lot of successful people are happy to help people that are coming along um, behind them. And that's essentially what launch class is. We want to help 
that are coming down, coming along behind us to do better than we did, to have more knowledge and strategy and wisdom for getting more successfully launched into their, into their careers, and family, etc. Tell a few trusted people. Find a good coach and mentor, tell a few trusted people. When you tell people, A, hopefully, if they're trusted, they will encourage you. They'll have some ideas for you, ideas that we're talking about today. But we want to have that on a regular basis. But the fact that the idea of you telling people that helps you to be accountable and gives you some motivation as well. So tell a few trusted people and ask them for help, for help and or direction. Take an inventory of all, all of our daily and weekly habits. There's an old saying, man makes a habit, habit makes the man or woman. Our habits are critical, but the idea here is not to beat up on anybody. We don't want to do guilt trips here. Take an inventory of our habits, daily, weekly habits. How do we spend our time? How do we spend our money? How do we, what do we eat? Take an inventory of all of it, and then decide one at a time. I'm going to change this one. I'm going to change it. I'm going to change. Just making those little changes gives us momentum, helps us feel good. It really does. So as the next slide probably says that the, uh, the process, the journey, is just as important, if not more important, than the goal. Because we become and we change through the journey, not necessarily just the goal achievement process. Another page on strategies. We're not supposed to be able to do it on our own. Our, uh, call it our pride, if you will. Uh, a lot of people have independent spirit. Uh, you've heard that said, right? Some people are just shy. And uh, I was that way when I was younger, for sure. And the idea is we're not supposed to, we're not designed to be able to do it on our own. We're, we're truly not. We're relational beings. That's just how we're made. So accept that idea. And we need God and we need others. Launch class is all about that. We need God and we need others. Others are us, coaches, but you need others around you, um, and God as well. Consider how you can include God's power in your life. I can tell you for sure from my experience, God is way more powerful than I am to bring about good things in my life. So ask God. I think it's a lifelong pursuit, getting to know God, getting to experience Him, getting to include Him in our in our life. One of the best promises in the Bible is good. The Bible says that God gives wisdom liberally if we ask, generously if we ask. Test God in that one. I highly recommend it. God will give you wisdom and direction if you ask. He is all for you and is just waiting for you to ask Him for help. Feed your mind and your soul. Perhaps listen to Rick Warren's Daily Hope podcast or something like it. It's one of my best and highly recommended habits. He's my favorite teacher, Rick Warren, who wrote The Purpose Driven Life, the best-selling book in history after the Bible. And so he has a Daily Hope podcast uh, on the net. It's about 20 minutes each day. I listen to it driving to work. It's one of my most important habits. It keeps my mind on good things. It keeps me believing. It keeps me positive. It keeps me understanding some of these ideas that we're sharing even today. But there's other things. Attending launch class is another great way to feed our mind and our soul and good associations, which is, of course, the next, the next point. We become like who we associate with. That is one of the secrets of a winning life. Strategies for a winning life is be, we become like who we associate with. So think, think uh, a lot about who we're associating with. Choose our friends carefully. That's kind of a first step. Are we associating with people that lift us up or put us down? That's a simple question. Are we hanging out with people that we admire? Or are we are hanging out with people that we're just comfortable? There's an old saying, it's easy to be a big wheel on a dirt road. In other words, if you're hanging out with people that are easy, you know, don't challenge us, people that we can tell what to do, perhaps not, not helping us get to our, our winning life, towards our goals. So choose our friends carefully and be Truly successful people, I already said this, truly successful people enjoy helping others who are coming along behind them. So ask, how can you get around your heroes? Through books, for one thing. It's one great way to get around our heroes. Read their books. But now with the, with the internet, there's so much access to great material. 
uh, seminars, videos, you name it. Just do a search on the internet of what you're looking for in the area of success, and you'll probably find some good material. I would suggest that when you do that, do it prayerfully with discernment, because it's, I guess there's lots of material right on the internet. Strategies for a winning life. I think this is the, uh, the last slide. Yeah, last one. This is kind of a summary, some of the key points. Strategies for a winning life. Remember, the journey is at least as important as the goal or destination. So what's that saying that I just said? Man or woman makes the habit, habit makes the man. Same, same as for our goal. Man or woman makes the goal, the goal makes the man or the woman. God's more, another Rick Warren quotation, God's more important in our, in our character than our comfort. So don't shy away from adversity. I forgot to include that one. Don't shy away from adversity. Adversity is good for us, it really is. It helps to grow. So we have a big goal, we're gonna need, we're gonna need to, fit, to personally grow and get stronger, but more talented, more skilled. We need adversity to help us get there. So that, that's an additional one, but what's on the screen. Have goals in all seven areas of life. That would be a strategy for a winning life. All seven areas of life. Have goals spiritually, family, social, financial, career, physical, and mental. I don't think we can do it, pursue them all at once, but have that in mind. Have goals in all seven areas. Make a plan in each area. Goal, plan in each area. And look at it periodically. Update that plan. You know, uh, it's very normal to to uh, look at our goals and say, "No, I'm not happy with the way that one's going. I'm going to adjust. What have I learned this week, this month? How can I adjust to move more uh, more efficiently towards my goals?" Make a plan in each area. Ask for help. Ask for direction. That's what launch class is about. So by all means, come back to launch class. Bring your friend. Make a plan in each area. Let's, let's rise up together. Don't expect overnight change or success. That's another challenge with achieving goals is we get frustrated. We get frustrated a little bit too soon sometimes. We give up too soon. So that's another key thing to remember. Don't expect overnight change or success. But you, you, you will feel good as you make progress. And a little bit of progress builds confidence to tackle more, bigger challenges. Form new habits one at a time and enjoy the feeling of progress. And help others be part of your process. A good balanced life is, we've talked about this, reaching up, asking for help, right? But as you learn, as you grow, reach down and help somebody else. Help pull somebody else up, a younger person. Launch class tries to create that, that format. So you can do it, that's the bottom line. If anyone else can do it, you can do it. You have the seeds of greatness within you, and that's really what Launch Class is about. We know you have the seeds of greatness within you, and uh, we just want to help you and encourage you on your, on your process, especially when you're younger, because you can change the world, you can have a huge impact. Um, if you can't help, don't make some of the mistakes that we've made. That's part of the idea. Avoid some of the pitfalls and the minefields that we've uh, learned as we go. So lastly, questions for discussion. What we're gonna do is break into small groups, and here's some guidelines. So a big group, obviously this is not a two-way interaction, but it really, really helps us to, to articulate our thoughts and hear other people talk. And you can, we can learn a lot from others, and we can be encouraged from others. So we'll get into our small groups. Small group is very, very powerful, and it's a very key part of launch class in small group. So take turns sharing with each other some of what you learned and liked about today's lesson. Just two things, that one. And next, go around the circle again. Take turns sharing with each other some of our goals and dreams. Especially if nothing can stop us. Brainstorm. Goals and dreams, write some down. If nothing can stop you, what would you love to achieve and be and do in your life? Try to listen and encourage one another. So that's a small group. And then we'll just break and in a second. Can you think of anyone else who might benefit from this message? Share it with them, that's an audible. Send them the links, send, send them to the launch class. There's a lot of great lessons there, a lot of great material referenced at that website. 
and uh, join the launch class mission to improve society. That's what we're trying to do. Uh, grow yourself, tell others about it. We want to uh, improve our society for our kids and our grandkids. That's what we're trying to accomplish. Helping young adults get more successfully launched in their careers, family, etc. Next week's lesson will be in two weeks. Check the website or register to be notified on the blog. That's all. Let's break. Thanks, guys.